Every one of us wonders about where we've come from, but how many of us really know? Who can trace our ancestry back more than just a few generations? Here in the brushy mountains of North Carolina, many families know they go all the way back to colonial America, but what about the rest of us? Well, a TV documentary producer in Great Britain has stumbled onto something that may be a giant leap forward in helping us find out. Philip Priestley, a British documentary filmmaker, was assigned to do a film about regional archaeological sites near Cheddar, England. Yes, the same Cheddar as in the cheese. Cheddar's a fantastic place. Very interesting archaeology. And I'd known it for 50 years nearly, because I've lived here nearly all my life. A show about archaeology around Cheddar made a lot of sense, because one of England's most important finds was made right here in Cheddar Gorge. In 1903, while excavating one of the gorge's many caves, workers discovered the oldest prehistoric skeleton ever found in Britain. Cheddar Man, as he's fondly called, is almost 10,000 years old. And although the gorge and cave are now a tourist attraction, at the end of the last ice age, this was an ideal living situation for prehistoric man. This would have been a wonderful place for hunter-gatherers to live. Everything was here that they needed, water, animals, and even a few plants and animals during the Ice Age. So it would have always attracted people, especially the caves, which offered shelter. You could put a fire to the front and keep people out, keep other animals out, and you could keep warm inside the, inside the caves. So a change of environment, new opportunities, and new ways of living, and that's what we see with Cheddar Man. Personally, Priestley found archaeology phenomenally interesting. But as an experienced television producer, he knew he had a serious problem. On TV, archaeology can be very boring. The digging is slow and tedious, the science complex and hard to explain. Priestley wondered how he was going to make this program watchable. There's a boredom factor in, in archaeology that you have to get over. So we could use the scenery, we could use the cave, it all looks spectacular, but I was looking for something else, something that would draw the viewer in to the story and uh, maybe give us a little bit of tension. And I said, wouldn't it be a good idea if we did some DNA testing of the skeleton? And then if we test some people in Cheddar and see if there's anybody related to him. Some fun detective work and a good dramatic device to keep the show interesting. So Priestley asked London's Natural History Museum, where Cheddar Man's remains are kept, to try and take a DNA sample from the 10,000-year-old skeleton. If they got a result, he'd then test a representative number of local high school students for their DNA. The budget for a regional television program is quite small. It's very tight, so you have to be very careful how you spend it and how many days shooting you can do and how much editing. So to spend £2,000, it sounds very, very small, but in, a, in, in that budget, it was quite big. But if it would create some suspense for a show, Priestley felt it would be worth it. A DNA test had previously been attempted on Cheddar Man and failed, but a new test had come into use, one which held much more promise. The museum sent Cheddar Man's jawbone to the Molecular Science Institute in Oxford. From one of the tooth cavities in the jaw, scientists attempted to extract a special type of DNA known as mitochondria. In the human body, the mitochondria is inherited unchanged, generation to generation, but only down the maternal line from woman to woman. It is the DNA most likely to stand the test of time and could still exist in the ancient bones. Much to Philip Priestley's relief, the scientists succeeded in finding a usable sample. Now Priestley turned to the faculty of Cheddar's local high school and sought their cooperation. I spoke to the bursar and I put the problem to him. I said, I want some people to, um, to be in this program, to have the DNA taken, which is, it's not an intrigue. They don't have to drill their teeth. They just take a little scrubbing from the inside of their cheek. And the bursar said, well, you'd you better talk to the, to the head of history here. And so um, I was approached by Philip to try and um, DNA some students um, who came from the local area. So I simply asked them a question along the lines of uh, how many of you have had grandparents living in this area? And if they could go back two or three generations, I asked them if they'd like to have their DNA tested. The students agreed. The day arrived, and with film crew present, Priestley documented the event. Some of the students were perhaps a bit apprehensive of 
what the DNA test was going to consist of. Some thought it might be a skin sample and some thought it might be a blood sample and I said, oh, it's only going to be a, a mouth swab. Um, it's really easy and I'll have mine done just to show you there's nothing, nothing involved. The scientists took their samples back to Oxford and began to cross-reference the results. Looking down here, Yes. Look at the one. There are yeah. 292. Only one. Only one out of the whole lot. On the basis of what we've got here, that would be an identical match, which would mean that they had a common maternal ancestor. So who do we match this up with? Let's see. Number 12. Number 12. So who's number 12? Number 12 was a match. Someone at the school was a direct descendant of Cheddar Man. Philip Priestley, while trying to dramatize his archaeology documentary, had made an, an extraordinary scientific discovery. As I drove home, I actually stopped and rang a few people and said, well, we've got a result, we've got a result. And uh, it, it only dawned on me after a little while uh, that maybe this was uh, an historic kind of finding. So Priestley called Brian Sykes, the molecular biologist who had conducted the test, and asked him. I said, is this the oldest, the longest DNA bridge that's ever been made between an ancient person and a modern person. He said, yes, it is. So I said, it's a world record. He said, yes, it is. An incredible discovery. Philip Priestley had bridged the gap across 400 generations. He had the ultimate payoff for his documentary. Now, all he had to do was reveal to the world who the matching subject was. So he called a press conference at the school and had his documentary's host archaeologist Mick Aston make the announcement. You're all agog, no doubt, to know who it is, who is related to the caveman found in Cheddar. Yes? What would you feel like if it was one of you? Because it's probably going to be of interest to people all over the world that there is a link over 9,000 years to this person found in the cave. Think you could stand the publicity and the visits to California and wherever? Yes? So, who is it? It's Adrian Todd. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is the man that's closest related to Cheddar Man. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. How do you feel about that, Adrian? A bit surprised. I was just about, about to say, I hope it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time anyone had been able to establish a direct link between ourselves and our prehistoric ancestors. Adrian, what was your instant reaction when you were told that you had this amazing line back 9,000 years to a caveman? Well, it was a great shock, but then I realised that that was why I'd been put in next to the next person to who was doing the filming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was fantastic. And I went down the next morning to buy the newspapers, and there it was all over the newspapers. This is the sun newspaper there's the times here big big feature that's front page picture that's the guardian a, a terrific piece that's the daily star here's uh, another example and uh, this is a swiss publication everybody found something of interest in this story so here's Adrian, uh, he's never been in the papers before, and suddenly he's, there's his head, Cheddar Man, and Juliet Binoche in her swimming costume, so there's fame for you. It struck me uh, very unusual that you would actually have people living in the same place, ancestors over 9,000 years. Coming from an American background, where my family moved every three or four years to new state, new city, no continuity, and you know, I didn't marry the girl next door, which might have been the case for Cheddar Man. This was just, it was just an experience which I couldn't relate to, and I still can't relate to, you know, staying in one place, and then generations after generations after generation, 400 generations in this case. It's just mind-blowing. There's some deep fascination with where we've come from and who we are and uh, these links between the past and the present. I suppose the fact that Adrian was the history teacher in the local school just made that was a bonus you couldn't you couldn't write that into a script people would say well that's that's ridiculous the history teacher turns out to be descendant of this ancient man but target was a lot less impressed than pretty much everyone around him 
I have to confess, although I know he's a, a relative, if you like, um, it's a very long lost relative from a very long time ago. So I can't, I, I'm intrigued by it, but I don't, I don't regard him with perhaps a, the same affection as I might someone who was a lot closer to my family. Although he takes it all in stride, Adrian Target has wound up with a very special treasure, the longest known human lineage, snaking back almost 10,000 years. And as important as this discovery is to Target and the scientific community, the greatest satisfaction goes to the man who stumbled upon it. That was terrific. Well, it's a, a joy. We'd done this work, we'd uh, taken that risk, we'd spent our, our little bit of money. And there we were, and we'd, we'd uh, hit the jackpot. Bingo. All of us want to know where we come from. Maybe it's the desire to belong, or just plain curiosity that compels us to look to the past for the answer. Now, thanks to a documentary filmmaker and a teacher of history, we've moved one step closer to knowing. Here's a little twist on our usual type of story. In this case, finding the treasure was the first thing that happened. But then nobody believed it was real. No one that is except Ralph and Ian. 